TJ Toku Iwa. Welcome back to Creative Kaitiaki guys, a fun space where myself and my zoo buddies get to know the plants and animals that share all turtle with us. Today I'm down here at Long Bay Okura Marine Reserve because we're taking a splash into the mysterious underwater world of sea turtles. Why don't you come along and explore with us? We're going to be sharing some stories and some totally awesome ways that you can be kaitiaki for the karere here that live not only on our whenua, but also out in our moana too. First off, let's go check in with our Maturonga Māori expert Cornell to learn how to say turtle in today's Māori. Over to you Cornell. I'm Mihi PJ, kia ora koutou katoa, ko Cornell Tukuri Tōku Ingoa. The Māori name for turtle is honu, honu, honu. You can have a go at practicing this word at home. Kia ora rāatu. Kia ora tamarikima, ko Catherine Toku Ingoa. First of all, turtles are reptiles, which means they are covered in scales or scoots. These scoots are made of keratin, the same stuff as our fingernails and our hair. Reptiles have a tricky time keeping their body temperatures warm throughout the year, and so they actually absorb this warmth from their environment. Animals that do this are called ectotherms. There are seven different species of marine turtle around the world, and we're lucky enough to see five of these species in the waters around the North Island of Aotearoa from time to time. You can tell the difference between the species of sea turtle by counting the number of scoots or scales along their head and their shell. Auckland Zoo, the Department of Conservation and Kelly Tongans have worked closely together for several years to help sick or injured wounds that are found on the beaches of Aotearoa. We are proud to be a part of Team Turtle, and we're going to talk more about that later. But first, PJ is going to show you how to draw a horse turtle. Over to you, PJ. Arawe. Cheers for sharing some of your knowledge about honu with us, Catherine. One way to feel more connected to kararehi and nature is through art. So I'm going to show you how to draw my favourite species of honu, the hawksbill turtle. All you'll need is some paper and whatever you like to draw with. I personally prefer to use markers like this. And today, I've picked out some turtley colours, including a few different greens, orange, browns, and a black liner. But you can be creative and use any colours you like. Alright, we're going to start with our lightest colour first and map out the basic shapes of our turtle's body. We're going to start with a big oval shape that's a bit like a rugby ball to make our turtle's shell or carapace. Inside this, we're going to do a second oval, except we're going to give this one a bit of a bumpy edge, just like this. Now it's time to add the flippers. For the back ones we're just going to add two bumpy circular shapes and then the front ones we're going to mark where they start and then we don't want them to come any further than the back flippers. Okay. Now the inner edge I make a bit bumpy and the outer edge a bit smoother. Hopefully that makes sense. And for the head I just mark how far I want it to come to, make sure it's got a nice sharp beak and then join it up. To the shoulders like this. Once you're happy with the overall shape, we can add scoots. To do this, I use little dots to help me divide the shell into even sections and map out where the scoots should go. You do want to be as accurate as possible with this step because each different species of turtle has a different arrangement of scoots. Now hawksbill turtles like we're drawing today have five central scoots going down the center of their shell and four lateral scoots on either side. Once we're done with that, we can go in and draw lots of smaller scoots along the margin of the shell, like this. Something unique about these hawksbills is that their scoots actually overlap, making their shell look a bit jagged with spiky edges. But most other turtles have scoots which lie flat and smooth. For the head, we can give it two eyes and a sharp beak just like a hawk and a big scale in the middle of the head. And since it's a hawk's bill, it needs four scales in between the eyes. Other species, like the green sea turtle, only have two scales here. Give it some more scales and then squiggly lines for a wrinkly neck. Next, we're going to completely cover the flippers with different sized scales. These are a bit smoother and look like pebbles. 
Once you're happy with the overall shape of your turtle, we can start adding some colour. Now using my brown marker, I'm going to make lots of messy, scratchy pen strokes coming from the top of the scoot and fanning out. Do this to all the scoots on the turtle's shell, or the carapace, to give it that beautiful sun ray pattern. Then take a brighter orange colour and fill in the rest of the scoots on the shell. Taking that darker brown colour again, we're going to fill in all the rest of the scales over the turtle's flippers and the head. Just trying to leave a little white edge around the outside of each single scale. Now I'm going to use my greyish and greenish colours to fill in all the space that's left on the neck and in between the scales. Now I'm doing this really rushed and don't worry if you do smudge the brown underneath. That actually adds to the uniqueness of your turtle's pattern. In nature, patterns are very, very rarely perfect. Now it's time for my favourite part of any artwork. Using a black marker to go around everything and make it pop off the page. This lets you tidy up any lines that maybe you messed up through the process and just really helps separate all the colours and body parts so we can tell them apart. I go around all the flippers, the entire body, and in between the big scoots on the shell and the head. Then I actually take a finer marker to go in between the scales on the flippers. Can you see how much difference this makes? And you can see why we left a white edge while we were colouring all those scales too. In that same black liner, just go freestyle, adding any extra details you want. I use dots and squiggles and lines to give the illusion of shadows and shine on my turtle. I'm even going to add some labels to turn it into more of a scientific diagram and help point out those features that make this turtle a hawksbill. And of course, please do share your work online with us using the hashtags CreativeKaitiaki and Create with Auckland Zoo. Back to you, Catherine. Turtles like to eat soft, squishy food that they find in the ocean. Things like seaweed, squid, and especially jellyfish. Unfortunately, there's lots of, lots of plastic waste ending up in our waterways. Plastic is made to last a really long time. The plastic in our oceans doesn't break down. Instead, it floats around on the currents. Turtles who are hungry and looking for a snack to eat might mistake the plastic for something yummy. If they eat that plastic, something as small as a rubber band could cause a lot of trouble for our turtles. It gets stuck in their tummies and all the healthy food that they're supposed to be eating doesn't have space to go through. Now turtles really need our help because every single species of turtle, marine turtle that we find in the ocean, is endangered or critically endangered today. Turtles occasionally visit our waters, but they should never be found on the Takatai in Aotearoa because it is not a place where they breed or lay their eggs. A turtle on the beach in Aotearoa is a sign that it is sick and weak and probably needs a lot of help. So what should we do if we find a honu on the beach in Aotearoa? The first thing to do is make sure that the area around the turtle is safe, that there are no dogs or small children playing nearby, as they might scare or accidentally hurt the turtle. Next, and this is the most important step, we need to call the Department of Conservation on their hotline 0800 Dog Hot so that they can organise for the turtle to be picked up off the beach in a safe way. Any turtle found on a beach in Aotearoa is brought here to NZCCM, the special vet hospital at Auckland Zoo. Once they arrive, the turtle will be assessed by the vet team and they will decide on the best way to treat the turtle going forward. Then, the turtle is moved to Sea Life Kelly Tolton's the Aquarium in Auckland for rehabilitation, which might take a few months or a few years, depending on the turtle's condition. The team at the aquarium will look after the turtle really carefully, feeding it the right diet and giving it any medicines it might need. Once a turtle is fit and healthy, they are released back into the ocean where they belong, usually during the summer months when the water is nice and warm. If we want to continue seeing honu in the waters of Aotearoa and around the rest of the world, 
we need to try and use less plastic in our lives and make sure that any plastic we do use goes into the correct bin and not into the ocean. It's also very important for us to be careful about our actions when we are in and around the ocean. Things like fast boats and fishing hooks are also serious threats to sea turtles. I'm sure you can all think of ways to help turtles yourselves. You could even have a corridor with your friends and Vano to see what they think. Perhaps you'd like to tidy up a beach or do an audit of all the plastic things in your home and see if there's anything you could be swapping out for something more organic or maybe compostable. Every little action helps. Next, we're going to check in with Kat for some ideas on how to make our own Play-Doh. Have fun, Tamarikima! Kia ora, Catherine and PJ. That's really important messaging you've done there. And it's given me something to think about and how I can actually help protect our marine turtles here in Aotearoa. Now, when I go to the shops and when I'm buying toys, quite often they come wrapped in plastic or they might even be made of plastic. So I've been thinking about what I could do at home to make one of my favorite toys, Play-Doh and therefore I don't have any of the packaging. And I'm gonna make this using ingredients that you can find in the kitchen, uh, nice and easy, and also it smells really, really good. So here are the ingredients that you'll need for your no-cook Play-Doh. Two cups of flour, half a cup of salt, one cup of hot water. You might need a little bit of help getting this. Two tablespoons of cooking oil, and two tablespoons of cream of tartar. You can also add some food coloring to this, or what I have done is I am adding some jelly crystals, and the flavor I've gone for is chocolate so that my Play-Doh smells like chocolate. But the jelly crystals will also add color to your Play-Doh. Our dry ingredients first, starting with our flour, the two cups, and the half a cup of salt. Give those a good mix around, just so it's nice and evenly spread throughout. Next, we're gonna add our two tablespoons of cream of tartar. Now I'm going to add the jelly crystals into it, and we're gonna give all these dry ingredients a really good mix, making sure those jelly crystals can be seen evenly spread all throughout the dry mixture. I'm now going to make a well in the middle of the dry mixture to pour my wet ingredients. You could use the back of the spoon or your fingers to do this. I'm now going to take my oil and add two tablespoons of it to the middle of my dry mixture, right into that hole, that well that I had just made. Next, take that hot water, that one cup of hot water, and add that to the bowl as well. Now I'm going to mix my wet and dry ingredients together. To begin with, I'm going to use a spoon just to incorporate them together. But after a little while, I'm going to use my hands to smush it all together and to knead it. If after a while, you still think that your Play-Doh is sticky, don't stress. Actually leave it for a little bit. Leave it for about five to 10 minutes. You can either leave it on the bench or even pop it in your fridge. You'll find that once it's cooled down and once it's started to absorb, that it will actually be a great consistency to play with. If you are still worried that it's still sticky though, after that time, you can add a little bit more flour. Or if you think it's too hard and you can't make shapes that you want to, you can add a little bit more hot water to it. Just sort of see how it works for you. And there you have it. Our beautiful, smelly, no-cook Play-Doh, plastic-free. Well, now the best part of making Play-Doh is actually getting to play with it. You might like to use different cutters, or you might even like to make a habitat for our marine turtles. You might put in there their favorite food source, which are jellyfish, which does look a little bit like plastic. Now, after you have finished playing with your Play-Doh, just make sure you pop it in an airtight container so that you can have many more hours playing with your Play-Doh. So next time you are out looking at toys or thinking of buying something, and you see that it's wrapped in plastic or made of plastic, just be a creative kaitiaki and think, can I make this at home? How can I help protect our marine turtles? Well, PJ, I've got lots of work to do here, so I'm gonna throw it back over to you now. Bye, kakite.
Hi again. Thanks for joining us to Korero about Honu today. I'm sure you've learned something new, been inspired to continue exploring the natural world of Aotearoa, and hopefully even found some creative ways that you can be kaitiaki for our kararehi, again, not only on our whenua, but out in our moana too. As always, we love seeing your money. So whether you've done some kaitiaki art, maybe you've found a way to reduce your plastic consumption at home, or maybe next time you're at the beach, you happen to come across a at the time of time. No matter what it is that you do, we would love to see it. So please do share your mahi online with us using the hashtags Creative Kaitiaki or Create with Kaitiaki. Karawe guys, and until next time, takite.